different proton, neutron, and electron numbers. Electrons were negatively charged, and the neutron was neutrally like its name. Each proton and electron number, from the oxygen we inhale to our lungs. To Welcome, let's explore history, news, life, science, knowledge, events, designing, stories, presence, on Trend Story Now. Have you ever wondered why and how our bodies produce electricity? Curiosity doesn't have an end. We started wondering why our bodies produced electricity. I mean after all we're not machines or anything and we certainly don't need to be plugged in anywhere to work. But what is it that makes our body produce this? Is it the same power that helps run our computers? Let's look at all these questions in more detail. Before we continue on trend story. Don't forget to like and subscribe, for more latest and hot news. Thank you. Let's start by explaining exactly what the electricity is. We need a source primarily for the presence of electricity we use in almost every area of life, from our televisions to our automobiles. When it comes to electricity, there is a myriad of resources that can produce this energy. Today, the most common sources of mass consumption are hydroelectric, nuclear, solar, and wind energies. Now let's take you back in history. Remember the chemistry lesson at school, the different atoms have different proton, neutron, and electron numbers, right? The protons were positive, the electrons were negatively charged, and the neutron was neutrally like its name. Each element has its own proton and electron number, from the oxygen we inhale to our lungs to sodium or potassium we take from food. The energy that electrons have is limited to a certain level. And these energy levels bring electrons spinning around the proton of the atomic nucleus, just like the planets spinning around the sun. When it is thought that protons and electrons which have opposing forces that attract each other, it is not difficult to predict that the bond between the nucleus of the electron, which is farthest from the atomic nucleus, is weaker and that it is easier to distinguish that electron from the atom. And if you have enough energy to release an electron, you can generate electricity. It is precisely how electricity is produced from the energy sources we have just mentioned. When you let the electron go in a certain direction by releasing it, an electron in the neighboring atom shell will pass to that atom. Because in most cases the number of protons and electrons that an atom has must be equal. And these are the electrons that make the electricity. Let's see how our bodies produce electricity. It is the chemicals that our bodies have that helps provide for electricity generation. Oxygen, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and all the other elements we take into our bodies have a certain number of electrons and protons, that is, a certain electric charge. These are the elements that make up the chemicals in our bodies and explain how different molecules combine with each other and how they react to each other. This is how energy is produced in our bodies. Now let's explain the process in a little simpler way. When we eat, large molecules that form nutrients are broken down by our digestive system, start to divide into smaller molecules and elements, and these structures are used as energy by transporting them to our cells. This process is called cellular respiration. All these molecules and elements also have the potential to create electrical impulses. In short, the answer to the question of how our body produces electricity is quite simple, chemistry. And you may think that this electricity produced by our bodies is not the same as the power that runs through your computer in front of you, but we are talking about exactly the same strength at the basic level. The only point separating these two forces is the source of electron flow and the way it is created. Science is weird. 